Ready? Okay, cool. So I'm just going to read uh, the passage of scripture that we're going to be going through today. Uh, I'm going to pray and then we'll, we'll get into it. So just as a body, uh, sorry, let me go back. We're looking at 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12, 27. If, you, uh, if you've got your Bible with you, uh, jump there just because um, we don't have it. Oh, we do have, oh, no, we don't have it up on the screen at the moment, but we might see it in a bit. Cool. So just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if an ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole of the body was an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole of the body were an ear, uh, where would the sense of um, hearing oh was a nose, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in, uh, the, parts in the body, every one, where, uh, every one of them just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable we treat with special honour. Uh, and, well, oh, uh, and the parts that are unpresentable we treat with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving great honour to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. So let me just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we can gather here today. I pray that your word would uh, um, go deep into our hearts. I pray uh, what I say today would um, build people up, would convict people. Uh, and anything that I say that is not truly part of your word, Father, I pray that people would um, see that and leave that aside. Uh, I pray your spirit would be present with us now, uh, that you would teach us. Uh, each one of us, and that we would uh, come to know you better and come to know each other better from this. Amen. 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 So I've been reading this book uh, at the moment, and uh, I've taken a few examples uh, from it today. So you can ask me about it later. I don't want to take credit where, it, where it's not mine. But he tells uh, of, a, of this guy called Donald Miller, right? And he's, uh, he's, he's telling us this story about um, when he was at school, and his teacher asked them all a question. He said, if you want a lifeboat, right? And there's other people on it, and you've got to push someone off to save everyone else. And you've got a male lawyer, a female doctor, a stay-at-home mum, a crippled child, and a dustbin man. Who are you going to push off? Now, you might want to think about that question. Who, who would you push off, right? But um, he, 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 he recounting the story, he says, I don't remember which person we threw out of the boat. I think it came down to the lawyer, but I, um, I can't remember exactly. I do remember, however that the class did not hesitate in deciding who had value and who didn't. The idea that all people are equal never came up. As I was saying before, we knew this sort of thing intrinsically, or at least we thought we did. And I think that's quite interesting, because I think we're all a bit like this. We've, we've taken on this thing that I like to call a, a lifeboat mentality. And it's this way of thinking that at best, other people aren't really as valuable as you, and at worst, you can ditch people, they're dispensable, right? And I think, if we're honest, a lot of people have taken on that a little bit. Um, and it's something that we do, sometimes intentional, sometimes it's like someone embarrasses you and you don't want to hang out with them no more. Or uh, sometimes it's unintentional, your life just got too busy and someone didn't really make the cut. Um, but the problem with living like that is it's all fine until it's you until you're the one who didn't really make the cut, until you're the one who's in that group and you're not really, you're not really welcome. You know, people don't value you. People don't want you around. And I actually think the Bible speaks to this uh, really well. Um, and Because I think if we're Christians, we'd say we're all made in the image of God, right? But it's something we forget very easily and start valuing people on the basis of other things. So if we read the first few verses that we had a look at, it said, just as a body, though one, has many parts, 
But all of its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we, all, for we are all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we are all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Right, so think about it this way. Imagine with me. Imagine if I came over to you and punched you in the arm, right? I'd never do that, but just imagine I did, right? And, um, and you're like, what are you doing? Why, why are you punching me in the arm? And I said, don't be silly. I didn't punch you. Uh, sorry. You went to me, why are you punching me? And I said, don't be silly. I didn't punch you. I punched your arm. You'd be like, what are you talking about? Of course you punch me, right? I know, I know it's my arm, but it's still part of me, right? And it's that same way that if, someone, if I did that to you, you'd be like, you've, you've attacked me. In the same way that part of your body is part of you, right? It's not the whole you, but it's part of you. Paul is saying to us here that because we have become part of Christ's church, because we all have the spirit inside us, we are all part of one body, right? And this is quite crazy because it means that we're so in intimately linked that when someone, we saw at the end of that passage, when someone gets hurt or someone is distressed or someone uh, succeeds, it's like it happened to us as well, right? But I think in reality, we don't really think about this. We don't really think this way. We're stuck in the lifeboat mentality, as I said earlier. Um, a great example of this is actually Netflix. So this book I was reading, he, he told me some stuff about the way Netflix works. I never knew. And I quite like Netflix, so I'm not kind of going at anyone who likes to, likes to chill a bit. But uh, he said that there's this famous speech given by the CEO of Netflix where he got all the people together, gathered them all around, and he said, we are not a family, we're a team. And he went on to say to all the managers, think about all the people who work for you. Uh, and the ones, if they came to you and said, I'm not going to work here anymore, I'm going somewhere else. Those ones that you'd really fight for, right, if they were going to go, think about them. Everyone else, fire them. Because we need spaces in our organization for people who are going to be cream of the crop. We want, we want someone even better to come in who, who we'd actually care about if they went, right? And some of you are like, that's pretty harsh. Some of you might think that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, but actually, the Bible says the complete opposite. As, as uh, I was preaching the other week when we were uh, looking at 1 Thessalonians 2, the Bible says we're not simply a team. The Bible says you actually are a family, right? If you look, uh, if you look in verse 13, if you've got your Bible with me, uh, with you, sorry, talking nonsense, right? And he says, for you are all baptized by what? One spirit, right? Every single one of us, if you have believed right, in Jesus, if you put your faith in Jesus and you've repented, all of us now have God's own spirit, God himself dwelling within us, okay? No one of you with God's spirit dwelling within you is dispensable. None of you are free to just be fired because someone thinks you're not uh, worthy enough anymore. God has said, I find you valuable and I will dwell within you, Right? And this is crazy. It goes even further. He says, Now if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would that body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. So this is amazing. Where the Netflix CEO says there are only some people worth fighting for, right? God says each and every one of you has an important role to play in my family. In my household, there are no dispensable people. There are no people that don't matter. He has selected each one of us to play our part. He's given us different giftings and different talents and different ways that we can serve one another. Okay? Now, you may not, you may not even know what your talents are. You may not know what your giftings are. But, but, but what Paul is saying here through the scriptures is that even if you don't know them, you have a part to play and he selected you. And maybe what you need to do is maybe chat with people and find out what your, what your giftings are. But you've been selected by him to be a part of his family and to play a part amongst us. But there's a flip side to this as well, right? So if we look at verse 21, the eye cannot say to the hand, what? I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, what? I don't need you, right? For some of us, it's not that we're like, I'm not sure 
I fit here. I'm not sure I'm important. I'm not sure I've got anything to offer. For some of us, we overvalue what we have to bring. We think, actually, I've, I'm doing all right. I accomplished quite a bit myself. And suddenly we start thinking, do you know what? Some of you people need to be a little bit more like me. You know, if, if more of us were a bit more like me, maybe we'd get more stuff done around here. Maybe, maybe if people had more of my perspective, then things would go a bit better. But actually, Paul's saying here that if you think like that, you're like an eye that says to an ear, I don't need you. And you never realize that you're deaf. Right? Or you're like the head that says to the feet, I don't need you. I've got all these great ideas. I don't, I don't need you. And then realize you, you've got nowhere to go to carry them out. Right? When we look at one another, if we look at one another and say, I don't need you, we've actually, re- we've actually not realized that there are giftings and valuable stuff in each and every one of us that we don't even realize is being given to us, right? Um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the great examples of this, I think, are cleaners, okay? I, I cleaned for, for a little while. And uh, I used to go into this like uni accommodation. You have to scrub all these rooms that were completely rank beforehand. And then you go out, you had like six minutes, you had to get into the next one, and you'd go from one to the other. Now, I don't think anyone ever walked into their room when they arrived and thought, wow, a cleaner's been here. It's spotless, right? I and mean, they probably just walked in and thought, OK, here's a room, put my stuff down and did their thing. But I know for a fact, if I hadn't cleaned it properly, there would definitely have been complaints, right? People didn't notice what the work that had been done, but they would have noticed if it hadn't, right? And in the same way, if all of us cleaners had gone, do you know what? I'm, I'm not meant to be a cleaner. All of us need to be tenants. We all need to live here as well. If there were no cleaners anymore. None of that work would get done, and none of those rooms were doing cleaned, right? In the same way, we, we can't look at people and say, we all need to be like this. You all need to be a bit more like me. Because actually, suddenly the work that you suddenly don't realize is being done, or the giftings that are being used, or the, the personalities that are around, right, that you haven't really noticed and you've overlooked, when they're gone, you know the phrase, you never notice until it's gone. You know, you don't miss something until it's gone. That, that I think, actually happens very regularly. But, but I think the Bible goes even further into this. He says, uh, in verse, verse 22 onwards, On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem weaker are indispensable. So as I was saying with those cleaners, actually that's an indispensable job. You really need them, you know? Uh, Otherwise the place is dirty all the time. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. Right? Now, the, the great joke about the lifeboat mentality, right, that looks at other people and say, I don't need you, and values people you know, from an earthly mindset, the great, the great joke about it is that we're quickest to push the people off the boat that are actually indispensable. We're often not very good at this whole kind of thing. And it's the people who do the stuff that no one notices. It's the gift that people kind of go, I'm not sure that's the one I want or the one we need who never gets the kind of compliments for the amazing job they've done, um, they're the ones that God calls us to honour above all the others. And uh, if you you know your Bible well, it it does talk about the the ones who come first will be last on that final day, and the ones who are last at the moment will be first. So I guess one of the questions that I've got off the back of this is, do do we honour one another? Do we notice when people serve us? Or is it something that just kind of flies under the radar and becomes what we expect? Is each person here made to feel valued and valuable because they're part of the family of God, because they have God dwelling within them and are made in his image? Um, On on this day, we often call it the day of rest as Christians. It's the Sabbath day. Is is this a place where people come and feel like they have to earn uh, their right to be here? Or is it a place where they can just come and rest and, and, and be, and be accepted? Because here's the thing, ultimately, we do actually need one another, and yet we can very easily act as if we don't need one another. Yet God really doesn't need any of us. He really doesn't. He owns everything that's in existence. He created it himself. He can accomplish what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, as he pleases. And yet he doesn't treat us like that. He doesn't look at us and go, oh, this is what I can get from you. This is what you've got that you can give to me, right? 
He doesn't do that at all. He says, there's nothing actually that you have that isn't already mine, and there's nothing that you can kind of give to me that will kind of enrich me. And yet he says, do you know what? I desire you guys. I love you. And God the Father says, do you know what? I want to send my son, and he's going to come down into this world that I created, you know, where people live most of their lives without reference to me, without acknowledging the fact that this is mine. You know, they love the party, but don't want to acknowledge the host. And, and he says, actually, I'm going to die. I'm going to take the punishment that we deserve for all the ways we've offended God, the ways that we live as if he, you know, he's not relevant to us. And not only that, he says, do you know what? I'll give you my righteousness, and I'll invite you into my family, and I'll put my spirit inside you and give you all these gifts that you're then going to pretend like you kind of own them in the first place, and you're great. Um, and, he, and he welcomes us into relationship with him. Right? We have nothing to add to him, and yet he delights over us. He treasures us and says, I desire to be with you and for you to be with me. And this is the ultimate reason why we're actually meant to think with that. Not, not simply because people do have gifts, although the Bible says that every single one of us has been given gifts by God. Right? Every single one of us has a part to play. But the ultimate reason isn't because they have some sort of thing to give to us. It's because God saw us and says, you have nothing to give to me, but I want to give all that I have to you. And so we are also called to say, even if you had nothing to give to me, even if you had no part to play, which isn't true, I still wish for you to be with me and to serve you and to love you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you, by your grace, have saved us, that everything that we have ever done wrong, you have wiped that completely clean uh, when we put our faith in you. You have clothed us in your righteousness. Uh, and now when you look at us, we are, we are spotless, we are clean, and you say, come into my family. I desire to be with you. I desire to, to spend time with you. I want you in my family, that you have prepared a place for us in your house finally on that day when we finally see you. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would, uh, like you, see each other uh, as valuable, as desirable, Father, that we wouldn't look at people as dispensable or not as valuable as ourselves, um, but like Christ, that we would lay ourselves down for one another. Um, and I thank you that even though we fail at this so often, I know I fail at this so often, uh, you forgive us, uh, you still love us, uh, and you call us back to doing that again. And I pray, Father, where we fail to love one another, where we inevitably fail to serve each other as we, do, we should, uh, as we fail to see each other as valuable as we should, I pray that we would forgive each other as you have forgiven us as well. And we ask this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen.